Hello and welcome to the food that makes us, recipes that comfort and connect us. We're here in my London kitchen as always and today I'm going to make one of the most, one of my most favorite dishes of all time. I know I say it often on this program because I do pick recipes that I really, really love for you, but this one really is just, it's my childhood, it's Ukraine, it's my mom, it's my grandmother, it's, again, it uses some of my most favorite ingredients ever. It's a beautiful summer dish and it's a beautiful autumnal dish, again. So we're using some courgettes, uh, we've, I've got a patty pan as well, which is a bit courgette in a way. And then I've got some really nice Cornish potatoes, um, dill, always dill, and um, a little bit of flour. You can use white flour, but actually I've got a little bit of wholemeal here, which is fine. A bit of garlic, these incredible tomatoes, um, which we got on Saturday from uh, Country Wild Country Organics. Yes, I got it right, I think, this time. It's not an advert, I just they just make have they just throw this incredible veg i mean look at these tomatoes they are so heavy they actually got squashed in a bag so i took the bag and tipped all of the juice in here we're going to grate them and make a an amazing sauce with them and then here i've got creme fraiche and in ukraine basically smetana which we use for these dishes is like a really thick amazing creme fraiche uh, you can find some French uh, French ones that are really good quality, but this is Neil's Yard. Again, not an advert. It's, I just think that they make the best dairy in the UK. And uh, this is it. This is how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be so thick that it sticks to your spoon. Or like if you put it in the thing, it just sticks out. So this dish is just beyond. It's just so beautiful. If you're vegan, you can omit the creme fraiche. But if you're not make sure that you get a really good quality one and uh, use it in this dish. Just incredible. And it's amazing hot and warm, but actually it's really, really good cold. In fact, when we were little, um, my mom would make it quite often in the summer. And my brother and I would wake up and we'd go and there would be this big pot of sauce. This is what it's called, which means sauce um, in Ukrainian. And we would um, just eat it with some bread, just picking up the pieces of courgette and potato out of the pan with the piece of bread and it's just beyond delicious. Okay, so this is quite a big one, but I don't mind making a really big batch of this and also I've got these amazing tomatoes which I've got four of. So I'm just going to cut it in half. So I've got this really nice, look at that beautiful milky flesh. And I'm, again, I'm just going to put it on the side and let's see actually that's quite big maybe i'm gonna cut it this way again and then turn it around yeah that's it and then i'm going to do similar kind of sizes to the uh to the uh, courgette yeah and then like this so skin and everything so some people say like it's like a more of a it's a pumpkin type thing but to me it's really just a big Courgette, almost like um, Natalia, what are they called when courgettes go a bit older? Marrow. It's almost like a yeah, and you can you can use a marrow. So if you have been growing courgettes and they've become a bit marrowish, uh, if it's if the skin is too tough, maybe peel it off. But otherwise, it, it, you know, it's good to go. It's going to be delicious. For the potato, my mom would peel them, and I think my grandmother did as well but these are new season Cornish organic potatoes so I just want to keep the nutrients and whatever look look at the skin it's so thin like there's really no need it will be such a waste to to do it to be honest with you in general I don't really peel potatoes much it's Joe's influence definitely he kind of stopped me from wasting the vitamins so again I'm just gonna cut a little bit off so it's nice and stable. We're going to use this bit as well. And then I'm going to cut it into thinner slices because obviously it's going to, we want it to cook quite quickly. So thinner than the courgettes, quite, you know, quite thinly. Something like this is, is okay. Yeah. And I'm going to do the same with the rest of the potatoes. Okay. 
So I've got some cold pressed sunflower oil and I'm just going to add it in and let it splash and let it heat up really well. And then for the courgettes, I'm going to start with the courgettes. I'm going to dip them into this flour just like that on each side. Maybe put a little bit of salt, also put a little bit of salt in just like this. Do the other side. And it's just going to give it flavor, especially that I'm using this really nice flour. And um, it's going to thicken the sauce a little bit. And I don't know, it just does some magic. And as I say, my mom does the potatoes like this as well, but as I'm too lazy to do this because I'm lazy. Okay, that, that bit here. And we're going to do the same for the courgettes and for the patty pans. And the potato we're just going to throw in and kind of brown without uh, a little bit of salt. Okay. So I can see it, like when it starts to shimmer a little bit, that's when you know that you, you can add your... See, there's a little... <laughs> dill is everywhere. There's a tiny little piece of dill there. And it's already kind of like becoming a little bit shimmery. So let's try. So I'm just gonna stick one of them in. Yeah, not yet. Just be pa I'm really impatient. That's one thing that I need to work on. I'm an impatient person with some things. But it's getting there, look. You're gonna start hearing the sound in a second. And this recipe is in my first cookbook, Mamushka, because as I say, it's just one of those dishes that are, you know, one of the favorite ones. And now it's weird, now that I think, I've got, so Sasha, my oldest son, is, you know, he eats, I don't know, crazy seafood. In the Chinese restaurant, he'd eat tripe and jellyfish and all of these kind of things. But he hates courgettes and he hates aubergine, which kills me. I was also a little bit picky when I was little, but I definitely like courgette, aubergine, anything like that, I absolutely loved. And I wonder if it's something to do with this dish as well, because the, I don't know, there's just something about this courgette. I'm gonna put a little piece of patty pan as well. And something about this dish that's just so delicious. And it's quite like medium, medium high heat. We want them to uh, brown really nicely. Okay, I don't actually have any kitchen paper, but you can do another thing. You can just get a fine sieve and a bowl underneath and then you just stick your vegetables here and they should drip off the excess oil. And then if this is looking okay in here, yeah, in your pan, if it's not too burnt, keep going. If at any point it becomes a little bit too burnt, take a cloth. Also, if you see all of this um, steam coming off, maybe lower the heat a little bit, it's overheating a bit. Um, so yeah, if at any point it, look, it looks really burnt, like take a really big piece of kitchen towel and wipe it out and put some fresh oil in. Doing exactly the same thing with this patty band. Okay, when all of the courgettes and patty pans are done, just put like a nice plug of oil in there. And again, wait for it to heat up on a medium high heat. And as I say, so my mom and granny would painstakingly flour these potatoes as well and fry them on each side, but I am too lazy. So I'm just gonna chuck half of them in. And that's what you do in restaurants, really. If you've got like big batches of something to fry, you get a big pan, you chuck it in and then you just leave it. So the bottom bit is going to get nice and caramelized. The top one is just waiting there, but also is getting cooked a little bit. And then very carefully, so as not to break up all of the potatoes, I'm gonna turn it around and fry some more. And it, it, it's okay if not every single one is like perfectly brown, but you'll see, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be quicker. Okay, so the oil is hot and shimmering, and what I'm gonna do, all of my sliced, not all, sorry, like, I don't know, almost half of my potatoes I'm gonna put in and 
you know, distribute as flat as possible. Kind of separating them a bit. But don't worry if there's some on the bottom, some on top. We're going to leave them. Oh, let's put that a little bit more in. We're going to leave the bottom ones to brown. I'm going to put a little bit of salt in as well. And I'm not going to touch them for a good couple of minutes. I want them to become really nice and crispy on the bottom. And then I'm going to turn them around and do the ones that were on top. Okay, I forgot an ingredient. Um, onions. I'm making quite a big batch, so I'm going to use two onions. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slice, slice them, so that's quite easy. Peel and slice. And I don't know, my mom would do normal half circles, I think, but I don't know if it's a, a not a lengthy thing. They just always cut the onion lengthways. I don't know if it's a Middle Eastern way or whatever, but now I always cut my onions lengthways. So instead of half circles, I'm just going to go like this. The thinner you do it, the quicker they will caramelize. So I left these potatoes be on the medium high heat for about three, four minutes. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... Woo! Careful! I'm sorry if your lambs got splattered. Try. Turn them around. Make sure that they are... And if you've got some sides that are like that, and then the others are not as brown, again, it's fine. As long as you've got some bits that are crispy like this, that's what you want. And again, I've turned them around and I'm going to wait another four minutes. And I'm going to do exactly the same to the other batch. And then we're going to do the onion that I forgot to do in the beginning. Abracadabra. <laughs> I've got Natalia here. We actually have quite a few recipes to get through today. So she's helping me to fry the endless patty pants. And I'm almost done with the potatoes. So the potatoes are done in two batches. And this is what it looks like once they're done. So you've got some super crispy bits and you've got just some slightly cooked bits and I'm gonna take it out. If you have nice kitchen towel you might want to drain them. I don't and I do not advise to use toilet paper for these purposes because it will get stuck to your potatoes and it will be gross. So I, I, didn't, I didn't do this thing with the toilet paper, not at all. Okay cool, so potatoes come out and then I'm going to put a little bit more oil in and I'm going to cook these onions. I'm going to kind of like fry them. We're not going to take half an hour to caramelize them from within, but we're going to, they're going to soften and they're going to get a little bit of color on the, on the outside. So loud today. Okay. The forgotten onions. You can do them at the beginning of the recipe or you can do them now, you know, when you're pan is free. There's a little bit of crispy potato bits there, but I think it's going to be okay. You'll, hopefully the onion will actually uh, let out its juice and it will help lift all of those crispy, delicious bits. So all of the onion is going in and sizzling. And of course, as always, I'm going to add a big pinch of salt to my onions. So they release moisture and it will help lift all of those crispy potato bits from the bottom of the pan. So just give it, give it a little stir and I'm gonna just kind of leave them for a bit. I'll come back to it in a sec. I'll show you what they look like at the end. Whew. I, I mean, I am making a particularly massive batch. I'm gonna give you a normal batch of this, but because I've missed it so much, I thought I'll make it and then I'll eat it for the next couple of days. So these tomatoes have split in the bag, as I say, but that's fine. So I'm just going to cut across the split here. And I'm using, um, I'm just using this because I want to be able to catch all of the juices so they don't just fall off the thing. And I'm going to grab my grater 
and I mean, look at that. This is, I, to be honest with you, I've never seen such amazing tomatoes in the UK before. This is the first year. I don't know if it's the freak weather or whatever, but these, oh, oh my God, amazing. Uh, just like my mom's in Ukraine. And look how <laughs> it makes it really easier than this job, doesn't it? Look at that. It's just coming off. And then the skin just is left in your hand. And we're going to compost it. Oops. Let me get it out. Okay. Skin and compost. Get the rest of the skin. There's like little tiny bits of skin in there. Again, not a problem. Do the other one. And you can use tin tomatoes, absolutely. If you don't have tomatoes like this, or you know, if you don't have good quality tomatoes, I wouldn't I wouldn't use fresh at all. It's only because I found these I just thought, oh I'll make it with fresh tomato. But normally actually I would use a um, tinned one. So you for this amount you'd need like two or even three tins of tomato. Because you want everything to be properly covered. Okay, now I'm just gonna squash this to get as much juice as possible out of here. And put it into the compost bin. I'm just gonna wash my head and now it's kind of overflowing a bit, so I'm just gonna carefully lift it and then it's quite a lot and it's beautiful. Look at that juice. Wow. I'm gonna do the, the same to the rest of the tomatoes, but just look at the color. If you haven't noticed, I'm a massive tomato fan. Oh, oh my onions, wait, hold up. No, they're good, they're good, they're good, they're good. So the onions are frying, all of the potato -y bits we've picked up, and actually they're gonna be ready quite soon. I'm just gonna lower the heat. And then, if you want, you can also just, if you've got a particularly woody kind of bits, you can just cut that off. That's it. And then we're doing exactly the same thing as we did before. And I don't know if I'm going to use four, actually. Each one has so much juice. Um, I'm going to see if I can get away with three and then have the other one just on toast or whatever. Okay, so these massive tomatoes gave so much amazing juice. I mean, bravo. The people that grew them, you're amazing. Uh, so I'm going to put it all into the pan with the onions. Yeah. So, oh my goodness me, this is it. I think my mom adds a tablespoonful of tomato paste as well when she fries the onions, but I don't have any today, so I'm just gonna go for the summery fresh version without the tomato paste. So I'm just gonna swell the tomato through with the onions, and then we're gonna put this amazing crumb fresh in. And it needs to be it needs to be full fat because then it's not going to split in the sauce. All right, and then I'm going to take a whisk and just kind of whisk it in. And this is something that we do a lot in Ukraine, add smetana or, you know, sour, thick sour cream, creme fraiche into tomato sauces. And I think it has a really amazing special flavor at this point if your tomatoes are not super sweet um, you can add a pinch of sugar as well if you like i think these are great as they are they don't need any help from sugar what i am going to do is i'm going to season it with salt so like a nice generous this sauce needs to be seasoned really well And 
I'm gonna use, oh my god, I'm so splattery today. So I'm gonna use the spoon with the sauce. Give it a nice, and then I'm gonna taste it. Taste for salt. And actually, if you wanted to give it a nice grinding of pepper, why not? Mm. Almost there, just a tiny bit more. Where is the whole pepper? Can you see it? Oh, it's on the big table. One sec. Okay, and I am, you know, because this kind of sauce with creme fraiche and tomato does like a bit of pepper. So I'm going to put a nice amount of pepper in, give it a swirl, give it another little taste. I'm going to use a different spoon. Look at the color. Look at that beautiful pink color. Mm. Oh, and the flavor is just amazing. So, in the pan, we have grated tomato, fried onions, and creme fraiche. And now I'm just gonna basically put a layer of courgettes, and then some potato. And then I'm going to put some more courgettes. Okay. Look at those colors and everything. It's just delicious. Put the rest of the potato. There you are. And the rest of these. There's quite a lot of delicious vegetables. And then I've got loads of dill here on the side. And actually, so you can cook it on the stove, but I did say I'm gonna cook it in the oven. So I'm just gonna put the oven on quickly. I don't know, like 170, if, if your oven is really ferocious, something like that, 160, 170, kind of slow cook it. And then I'm going to keep these umbrellas for my cucumbers, which I'm going to show you in a video. And then pick out the ones with kind of thicker stalks uh, to, to, be, to go in now. And then the rest of it can go in with the garlic, so I don't forget about it. As you know, we know that I, I tend to forget about the garlic at the end. I'm just going to put it here. Uh, so I'm going to take these thicker stalks of dill. And this is like a whole bunch of dill. Because... It's amazing and it's going to be really good in this in this sauce that's it uh yeah that's it and then i'm just gonna bunch it up like that and i'm gonna cut it quite finely oh another little umbrella and another little umbrella okay so bunch it up cut cut it quite fine oops one's a big big bit here Obviously, if your dill stalks are really woody, but I find that they're not, they're, normally they're, you know, very much edible. Don't waste them. Something like tarragon, obviously, or thyme, you'd want to, you know, put in a compost bin, but with dill, that's fine. Actually, I'm just going to put a little bit more, and then the rest of it is going to go in fresh at the end. With the garlic. Okay. We're nearly there. We're just going to cook it in the oven. So look, I'm just going to put it here. This dish is just a dream. Look at it. It's so beautiful. So I'm just going to literally just like put it in like that a little bit. It's just so it's all in the sauce. And uh, once the oven heats up, I'm just going to stick it in there for I don't know until the potatoes are cooked maybe half an hour 40 minutes all you'll need to do is to take one of the potatoes out give it a try and see if it's nice and soft and then you're done and as I say I almost prefer this dish cold or room temperature rather 
Ugh, I can't, I can't, can't wait for you to try it. Have you ever tried it, Kai? No, not this one. You're gonna love it. Okay, so I'm gonna cover it with the lid, and when the oven is hot, I'm gonna put it in. Still hands. And I'm gonna put it in the oven. Check after half an hour, 40 minutes, but if it cooks for an hour, no big deal. Okay, so let's see if it's ready. It looks good. It does look ready. And we need to put that grated garlic in now, which I will do. And it's just gonna give it just that extra little bit of deliciousness. Something that they do a lot in Georgia as well. Just adding that little bit of garlic uh, at the end of cooking. All right, and then on the hob it goes for literally like two, three minutes just to get the rawness out of that grated garlic. I mean, this is piece de resistance. It's just so good. So, oh my God, it smells just amazing. Um, so I've got my plate. I've got a nice big piece of sourdough and I'm just gonna go in here. Okay, just give it another little stir through and just serve it with a little bit of potato. Top three, top three dishes of my whole entire life. I really hope that you try it and don't forget about the bread and do this. This is probably the best bit. And don't forget, you can eat it absolutely at room temperature. So good, the best. Mm -hmm.